You know, tonight we're honoring, as we always do, the people who changed bass fishing, who opened it up to more people, who, uh, who solved some of the mysteries, spread the, spread the joy of it, and so on. But, but for all of our inductees, when you think about it, bass fishing changed their lives as well. Now, I can tell you, and I, I thank my lucky stars, I have no experience of being out in a cotton field farming for 12 hours a day. But I can imagine that experience doing that six or seven days a week makes the time spent in the bass boat just heaven on earth, just as sweet as it can possibly be. And that was, uh, that was what Ray O'Breckenridge decided he would like a little bit more of, uh, growing up in northeast Arkansas there, and, and just needed a little bit more of that heaven on earth, that, that time committed to, to fish. And so he made the big commitment. He decided to uh, put farming on hold in 1973 and fish the Bass Masters. And you know the story, he qualified for the first classic, the first season he was in there, his rookie season, and won that classic on Clarks Hill Reservoir, collected his $15,000, one up in Bobby Murray, there. and he was off and running. I know if you're a person of my age, you remember those first TV shows, a little bit of Virgil Ward, a little, little gad about Gaddis, and then we had sort of the second wave coming up, Jerry being among them. We'd, we'd see, you know, the Roland Martins come along, and the Rayo Breckard. Rayo was right in that, that sweet spot when everybody was still just couldn't believe they're seeing fishing on Saturday morning on a regular basis. And, uh, his show premiered <clears throat> the year after that and uh, ran on stations across the country and be watched by folks for more than a decade. And uh, I tell you what, that rookie classic winner, Rayo Breckenridge, proved he was no fluke. Uh, he qualified for five more classics out of the six more years he fished BASS. We miss him today as well, but our appreciation is as strong as ever, and we are proud to induct Ray O'Breckenwich into the Bass Fishing Hall of Fame. <laughs> Joey Breckenridge is here. Joey, come on up. Joey is going to accept the trophy. Joey, who actually filled in. His dad was under the weather, and Joey, Joey filled in and actually hosted the show one time. <laughs> Along with it. Is, is that right? Am I correct? Yes, All right. And Joey Breckenridge, thank you so much. We'd love thank to hear. Thank share you, share some memories with us. Tony, thank you. First, I, you I think uh, some of my family would probably 12 hours in the cotton field. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I remember taking sandwiches out to my dad sometimes in the middle of the night because they had to get the crops in. Wow. Uh, but 12 would be good. You know? that, that'd be good. I'm, I'm in favor of a six-hour work day myself. But, but, uh, to the board and to the professionals that are here today, uh, to the people that's uh, been around since the early, early days. I want to thank y'all and all, obviously, for the great introduction. About 42 years ago, I had a unique experience to watch my mom and my dad sit in the uh, living room at our house in Beach Grove, Arkansas. Google that. Um, but there is a Beach Grove, Arkansas. And I got to listen to them discuss and uh, pray on whether or not it was a very wise move to go from the certainty of farming, uh, which can, you know, a bad crop can change everything for you in one season, to this uh, somewhat fledgling idea of a professional bass tour. And yeah, they, they gave it a lot of thought and my dad wanted to know if he could compete at that level. He was always a good fisherman and, and he was actually probably as good of a hunter as he was a fisherman. Um, but he, he wanted to try it. So he had uh, fished a few of the local tournaments in around north, northeast Arkansas and done very, very well. Uh, he actually usually won them. But uh, he qualified, as Tommy said, the first year he fished the six tournaments, qualified for the Bassmasters Classic, won it in October of 73 at Clark Hill, and his show started January of 74. It ran on local KAIT TV for a few years and then went national around 79. Roland Martin and I were discussing that transition earlier tonight where he went from a regional to national. And uh, around that same time in 72, when they were decide making this decision, my mom, who had taught school for 23 years, uh, one day at school noticed a spot on the wall and then another spot. And within a couple of weeks, she had lost her eyesight totally. Uh, so we had a lot of things going on. I, I say we, I was a kid, so I, was, I didn't understand the severity of the loss of the eyesight as well as I didn't understand the opportunity of what was coming as far as going to fishing. But over the next few years, um, my mom and dad worked as a team and she accompanied him on almost all the tournament uh, tours and I was tagging along as one of the brats, uh, hanging out with other tournament fishermen's kids. 
And uh, we got to, I got to see how a mom and a dad worked together and a parents and uh, got to watch how uh, this dream unfolded over a period of, you know, five and six and seven and 10 years. Um, sadly, on uh, November the 6th of 81, I was a sophomore in college and my mom passed away unexpectedly that morning. Um, my dad, that was his last season, obviously, and uh, his health was getting bad. He was still doing the show, but um, it got to the point in, 80, in 1985 where he could no longer do the weekly television show, the demands of being on the road, and by this time doing a national show, he was traveling all over the place. So with that being said, um, you know, he wound up his career, and he was still doing cystic fibrosis and muscular dystrophy uh, charity tournaments. Uh, him and Randy Wyatt and Walter Walt Garrison of the Cowboys, they, they were a threesome that you can kind of imagine uh, going to these tournaments and, and handing out trophies and signing autographs and things of this type. Dad also never uh, turned down the opportunity to speak to um, high schools and elementary schools, bass clubs, rotary clubs, clubs of clubs, anywhere he could to uh, talk about, as Mr. Ray mentioned earlier, not only the uh, the benefits that we get from our environment, but also the responsibilities that we have and we owe it. So it's not all take, it's also give. And my dad was real big on that. He wasn't, he did, I, I don't call him, I'm not being mean when I say tree huggers, but, but uh, dad was pretty big on catch and release programs and, and things that, that encouraged um, smart fishing and smart hunting. If we, if dad was here today, um, my dad would probably be, and a lot of the people that know him would probably say he would be the last person to ever bring up his accomplishments. And I think what he would probably be the most thankful for was the relationships. And that was what I heard him and my mom talk about so many times over the years was, uh, you know, Forrest and Nina Wood. I mean, they were practically aunt and uncle for me. Uh, they were just like family. Um, a lot of the tournament fishermen that uh, were great friends and and uh, as Tommy said, you know, I, I still run into people, you know, a few years ago, Basil Bacon. Of course, we're good friends with Bill Dance. Um, people that will come up and say, you know, <laughs> they never start off the conversation with, golly, Rayo sure was a good fisherman. You know, he, he, boy, he could sure hunt, and he could do that. They always say something about the character. Character is usually the word that's mentioned first, and uh, I think that's probably what I'm most proud of is the character, not the not the trophies, not the TV shows or anything like that. It's just that when someone comes up to me and I talked to Mr. Ray the other night on the phone and, and he said, you know, Joey, when I talk to anybody, they always, the first thing that comes up about Ray Owen Marilyn is what a, just the epitome of character. And, you know, golly, talk about a high bar to reach as a kid. But uh, I'm trying, but I'll never get there, but I'm trying. Um, but I'm just so thankful for what uh, the life they had in this industry. And I, I want to I mention the fact that my dad's brother and my favorite uncle, Russell, is here. Russell Breckenridge, I, where you at? Russell, my dad's brother, who is, and, and his son, Russ, my cousin, <laughs> son-in-law, Chris, um, Gail Breckenridge, my dad's cousin, who's, who's spent a, a lot of time with my dad farming, fishing, and everything that you do out in the middle of cotton and rice fields. Um, and of course, my, my beautiful wife, Brenda, down here, who never got a chance to meet my mom and dad, but has heard so much about them that I think she takes pride in the fact that uh, the character of, of my mom and dad was what was, I think, made them so special. Um, also, one thing I do want to thank, and, and I mentioned this the other night to him, but I want to thank Mr. Ray as I always called him, for having a dream and going after his dream back when, as an insurance salesman, there wasn't a, I don't know if, if he knew it was going to work, uh, who, who hardly ever starts a business and you know it's going to work, but he had an idea and a dream and he followed it with a passion. Um, and his dream over the last 40 years has allowed so many other people to fulfill their dreams. And I just, Mr. Ray, I can't help it. I want to give you a hand. I told him the other night on the phone, I said, when I see you, I said, I hope I don't embarrass you, but I'm going to hug you. I don't shake hands with somebody I love, you know, I just love him to death. 
and uh, got to see Forrest and Anna and just, just so many great people. Um, I always wondered the one thing with, with Mr. Ray, how far he really could have succeeded in life if he had not been such a shy introvert. <laughs> but uh, I'm going to say the two things that my mom or my dad would want me to say right now. And basically, that is uh, just thank you for bringing my dad uh, up on stage here in, in spirit to accept this award. And uh, God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Joey Breckenridge.